Now let's look at some resistor examples for Kirchhoff's voltage rule. And again, focusing just on the potential versus the voltage. So here I've got two examples of resistor symbols with an arrow indicating the current, both the direction and the value for the current. And just to make the numbers a little easier in these examples, I've given both resistors 2 ohms and both currents 5 amps. Now from Ohm's law, the voltage across that resistor is expected to be the current times the resistance, which means it's 5 amps times 2 ohms, or we expect 10 volts. Now practically speaking, again, we have to think about which side is the higher side and which side is the lower side. For resistors, the side the current comes in at is the higher side, and the side it goes out at is going to be the lower side. And that's just letting you know that you've got a value there um, that the potential is changing. We can do a similar sort of thing with this resistor, but recognize it's still the higher side where it comes in, and it's still the lower side where it comes out. Numerically, then, we could start figuring out some potentials and how the potential changes. So let's say I've got a system where it came in at 10 volts. But it has to drop by 10 volts, and so that means the value on the other side would have been 0. If for some reason my circuit was grounded over on this side, then that would mean my value of 0 volts would have been over here. Now it doesn't move the 10 volts there, instead it still has to drop, so you'd have to have minus 10 volts on this side, because this side must be lower than this side. So if this side was grounded at 0 volts, it's as if this side went underground downhill to give you a value of minus 10 volts. Now we can do the same sorts of things with things over here. And again, if I've given a voltage on one side, or not the voltage, excuse me, the potential on one side, I can figure out the potential on the other side. So if this one was the same sort of thing, 2 ohms times 5 amps, which means the voltage is going to be 10 volt difference. If I was at 18 volts on this side, what would I have to be over here? Well, it would have to be 10 volts lower, which would give me 8 volts. But the circuit could be rearranged. This might be within a larger circuit. Let's say it was 18 on that side. Then over here, I would have had to have been up at 28, because this side has to be 10 volts higher than the potential of 18 volts. So remember that that voltage is really a difference in potential from one side to the other of any resistor. And regardless of how the resistor is physically oriented in the circuit, you could even have ones that are going at diagonals or straight up and down, you look at the direction the current comes in, and that has to be the higher potential side. And where the current comes out is the lower potential side. And so when you calculate your I times R, it has to be higher to lower. And that means you'd go a decrease in potential. Or if you happen to be going across the circuit in the other direction, the potential would have to increase going opposite of the current. Keep these individual examples in mind as we move on to do full loops.